Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. As I said, second day, people are really tired, a lot of topics, a lot of things to think about. So thank you for choosing this one. We are going to be speaking about machine learning on the edge. So just check that you're on the right talk. Hopefully you are. Too late to leave. Now stay, please. Uh, I'm going to be here with my colleague, Carlos de Huerta. I'm Pablo Peris, digital advisor in Microsoft Consulting Services here in Spain. Carlos de Huerta. I'm working with uh, manufacturer customers uh, here in Spain as an architect. And because the talk is in English, I'm going to call him Charlie. Okay? Ch Charlie from the garden. Charlie okay. for the game. I, I guess you don't mind. So this is the agenda. And we were looking at the agenda. And we, we think, what do you think about the agenda? What do you think about the introduction? No one likes introductions, no? We, we actually, we ran a machine learning algorithm to predict your emotions during the talk. And this was the result, all the forecasting. You are going to be bored to death for the ten, first 10 minutes. And we know that because at Microsoft we have this software that I loved because they told me that I was 25 years old, and of course I'm not, that looks at people and understands emotions. And we ran this algorithm and this suggested that this is the right outcome. And we believe algorithms, right? So we say, okay, let's change. Let's start with the demo. Let's start with the demo so you are not bored. But you still need to go through the, the valley of the death of the slides. You know, at the, in the middle of the presentation, there will be some slides. Then we have another demo to keep you awake until the end, and we will finish with a video. Of course, as I said, we are believers of machine learning, and the, and the machine learning algorithm also told us the recommendation for the titles. You cannot call it demo. Demo, what is this talk about? So we are going to start with just a short demo, very, very short, but to, for you to understand when machine learning on the edge really makes sense to be applied. Okay? Then Carlos, sorry, Charlie, will speak about the use cases and for you to think about where you can apply this tomorrow you know, for your customer or your internal departments or whatever. And then we will go to the what is the edge and what is the machine learning. By then, hopefully, you, you, you grasp what we are talking to about uh, talk here. Okay? So without further ado, let's go to the demo and then hope the connection is working fine, that it was not a few minutes ago. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Can you see this? No. Can you see my browser? It will be nice. Maybe I need to close the PowerPoint? Okay. Okay, now better. Vulcan is, is not a Contoso company. This is a real company in the States, in the Midwest. They are steel producers, the manufacturers of, of steel. And what they told us, they told Microsoft is, well, they want you to have a dashboard to control the health and safety. Oh, now there is an alert. What a what coincidence, right? So they wanted to control the health and safety situation of the trucks that they have around the States, okay? This is a really serious issue because every day in the States, four people are dead because of health and safety reasons, okay? And it's not only that, it's the fines and the everything related to having those kind of problems. So the idea was to be able to create a dashboard that in a real time, and this is the important part here, in a real time will notify the people about alerts or risk situations when they, they need to act, okay? So suddenly we have this health and safety bridge, bridge and we see here that in these uh, steel beams, instead of having uh, one high level, that is what the policy says, they have two high level, okay? And that's not correct. So here, what is the algorithm uh, doing? It's, it's, it's bringing an alarm to someone that is looking at the window and saying, okay, this is not correct. But also, look at this guy here. Can you see that guy? He's not wearing a helmet, and that's not correct. So this is the reinforced learning. So he's saying, okay, this is not correct. We need to change the algorithm. We are going to retrain the model. And how we are going to retrain the model? Just by saying that no protective helmet is detected here. Okay? Of course, now we need to retrain this model. We click on Save. And we have, coming from all the tracks in the world, they have images that have been captured, and they need to process these the images and retrain the model to be smarter and easier. So we can click here and retrain the model. Of course, I can choose as any virtual machines that I want, the model, and I train. This is a simulation, of course. Nothing is happening, not, <laughs> not depending on the Wi-Fi. That was too risky. But now the idea is that the, that the model is being trained with the images and, the, and everything that has changed around the globe. It's not important that it's specifically here. 
And this is the key point. I have a fleet of 100 tracks around the world. I cannot go with a USB to every single track and deploy the new model. I need a system to deploy this model to all the tracks. And then that's the system. I click on Deploy, and I'm deploying this. Of course, if we go, and we will go a little bit deeper in the, the technology behind that, this is using containers on the old algorithm is running while I'm deploying the new algorithm, okay? The new algorithm is deployed, so I click on test, the same image, now it's saying hard, hard, not detected. It should be loaded, okay, as I said, the Wi-Fi is not the, the quickest, but this is good for this demo. <laughs> so this is what we are got, we're trying to get here, is having these tracks offline or with a really bad connection, being able to have real-time responses on the tracks with the cameras, but all the information that is gathered from all the tracks going around the states, take that information and put it into the cloud, process that, change the algorithm, and deploy the algorithm back, okay? So I will just explain quickly what has happened here. Yep, yes. So here we have basically what is going on behind the scenes, okay? So we have the cloud where we have the IoT hub. What is the IoT hub? It's the thing that is getting all these messages from all over the world and is processing those images. Then we have the insights. Actions, okay, don't underestimate the insights part. That's the big data part. That's, all this, all, that's what you know how to do, is getting data from all these different sources and finding patterns, okay? That's why the cloud is important, because there you can go to compare uh, data from one place to another. Then you think about the actions, and the important bit is that those insights and those actions, those can run on the edge, on the track, because at some stage, your connection won't work, and you need that circle to be processed right where the data is generated, that is in the track. So that's what we meant by Azure IoT Edge. Basically, three things. An SDK that is going to manage all the connection, is going to manage the protocols. You don't need to know all the protocols, OPC UA, uh, Modbus, all those protocols, those are not relevant for you. So IoT Edge is going to provide that SDK, is going to provide a modules, that you can customize for your problem. That is where the insights and the actions are going to be stored. And of course, you need something on the cloud to manage all these devices that is not one, 10, or 10, can be thousands, okay? So that was supposed to be the last demo. That's why we changed the order. Hopefully, now you can understand more or less what we are speaking about when we speak about machine learning on the edge. And this is it. No, no, okay. <laughs> now, Charlie will explain some examples about use cases where we can really use this. Yeah, and here I, I want you to start thinking in three patterns that we will see, and even in, in this demo from, from Pablo uh, Western App, is uh, three patterns that is important when you think about use cases for, uh, for the edge. First is uh, the edge is a, a cloud endpoint. So at the end, you're able to leverage capabilities from the cloud at the edge but not only for capabilities, but for, uh, for, for features, but for security. You need to manage all those potential tracks, or we'll even see other scenarios where you need to manage that security. As well, the management and deployment at scale of those tracks or of those edges at all those endpoints all around the world. And for that, the cloud would be unenabled. Second, the point that you need from the edge to connect potential uh, sensors that are not connection capable. At the end, for example, in manufacturing or uh, any uh, scenario that has sensors that have information that you need to move to a central uh, endpoint, those are not directly connection, so it needs to have a gateway. That would be the edge. And third, uh, in, in this scenario, you will see that maybe that information needs to be run quickly, quickly in the, in the sense of I need to act uh, in a machine under the second, so I, don't, I can wait things to move to the cloud and come back, and as well, I need to be able to run offline. So at the end, those three patterns would be interesting to, to put in your mind to review, for example, these type of use cases. Uh, we may 
you may have heard about the uh, semi-autonomous car. At the end, a car needs to manage and to handle a lot of sensors. And for that information, that may be interesting to upload through that endpoint as I was sharing, as, uh, as well, I need to act locally. Of course, from uh, a, a point of view of asset management, uh, a drone uh, a review of, uh, of assets, uh, small agriculture, you see many uh, scenarios that afterwards we can, we can talk. But we wanted to focus on some uh, examples that leverage that uh, patterns and that idea that we want you to, to think about it, that how could I learn and, uh, and deploy edge scenarios in, in, my, in my company and at my customers. In this case, it's uh, I think in a hospital where uh, I need to uh, maybe understand uh, and uh, anticipate uh, medical fall and, 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 and rise uh, risk alert. In this case, it's a uh, focus on vision. So the idea is you'll see at the, in your right, in your left, my right, uh, is the live uh, video of, uh, in this case, the hospital. At, uh, uh, on the other side, you will see which alerts ads are raised based on uh, different patterns. In this case, are trained for classified in the sense of we will see what's happening inside the in, in the bed in the room and then raise those those alerts i want to put one of those in my house also yes to check when the bed is empty yes it did for the first is saying it's, it's uh, occupy so it's uh, understand that there is a uh, a man in this case in in the room and it's important for example for other uh, man or woman that uh, they have the what they call the the roll, so it's down. It has detected and has jumped that that uh, that moment that the that alert. So the idea as well that it has it's sitting, so it's it's moving or it's empty the the in the bed. So at the end is trying to think about those scenarios. We're talking about the edge. In this case, I send some uh, some alerts in, in in the sense of the hospital without really moving out, uh, uh, out to the cloud. Second, for example, in the in manufacturing space. Uh, even in some uh, uh, di multiple scenarios, sometimes we think about machine learning for predictive uh, maintenance or, or, or potentially improving or anticipate the, the error. But many times uh, in, in, the, in the manufacturing and even the energy in the space, we are moving a lot of uh, but preventive maintenance so that uh, people it's uh, moving uh, inside the, in the, the assets and the buildings to find out this, if, if there's any problem. Uh, so sometimes, as you gather information to build a predictive maintenance uh, scenario, you may start doing preventive, automated uh, uh, maintenance. So in this case, based on uh, region convolution network and Java, you're able to fast uh, find uh, potential uh, errors, in this case, cracks in machinery, and then being able to, uh, to do, a, for example, corrective uh, maintenance while you are moving into a predictive uh, uh, scenario. We're more in the retail, in this case, banking airports. It's uh, uh, maybe uh, seen as uh, an easy one, but the end, when uh, we are queues and we are waiting to, to be attended in, this, in, in, in the airport, in, in bank, uh, it's important sometimes simply to count people at check-in area to notify the staff based on, on the queues and the number of the people. And uh, at the end, we are able, in this case, to uh, manage and anticipate and in real time uh, leverage and capabilities from the cloud that at the end running at the edge uh, being able to to handle this scenario, in this case, is even focused for us as, as, uh, as more scenarios, looking at the head and shoulders for the people. Moving more, and this is I, I, one that I like because it's, it's uh, in the Vision Zero from Bellevue in, in the United States, and it's focused on trying to reduce to zero any damage for people, uh, uh, environment, and, and, and the country and the city. 
So here it's uh, uh, some model running on top of a building to understand which is the, the traffic, inspected traffic, and be able to manage potentially the traffic lights in, in this area. So sometimes you are able to understand which are the flows. It's, it's, a, it's a crossroad, but which is the people doing at the 9 a.m. Uh, or at the 4 a.m. or maybe based on the event today uh, of this week and the Big Data Spain event, all the, the parking was uh, full based on uh, the people uh, coming here. So sometimes you're able to anticipate and run locally some, some activities for this uh, scenario. And uh, think of, last but not least, and when we think, of course, uh, traffic and Maybe safety, we're uh, sharing with you the Vulcan scenario. There's more for uh, health and uh, safety, security and at the enterprise. But looking in the, in the public uh, sector, uh, here you're, you're seeing three di different scenarios. The first on your left is the vehicle and shoulder in the, in the sense of being able to anticipate uh, potential problems this uh, track uh, in the middle of the, of the, of the road that uh, leverage a pedestrian on the road. So anticipate and send alarms in the geofencing uh, a scenario, not really in, uh, uh, remotely, that as well could happen. Uh, uh, and this uh, learning could be sharing in a completely different scenario that is good detection. That's, uh, well, you can detect uh, someone with a helmet, but in this case, is there, there are uh, uh, thief that are trying to to move with a motorbike into a, a jewelry to, to rob the, the jewelry. And, and, and in this case, the idea to anticipate that it's not normal, that someone in the helmet with a motorbike in, near the, the building, in this case, moving toward the, the, the shop in this case. Not working? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So at this stage, we are wondering, or the idea is, wh what is the edge? Uh, we've been talking about the business cases, we've been talking about how to use it, but now the next question is, where is this edge? This edge is everywhere, actually. You know, some people are saying that the, the world is becoming a, a computer itself, and to think about it, uh, a technology is really a breakthrough when you don't see it anymore like the cables of the Wi-Fi or things that you don't notice. And we don't notice anymore, but we have more computing power today in this smartwatch and the telephone that the, day, the first day in the keynote, they mentioned the power that they used, the computing power, to put the Apollo in the moon. And we have more power these days on our devices that we are wearing. So if you're wondering where is the edge, think about all these places where you can really compute. And I know the autopilot is really probably a cliche, and you think that's really complicated. But one of the purpose today is to say, you can use even your phone, and that's the next demo, hopefully it will work. You can use your phone to deploy an algorithm and use it disconnected, that that's the key point. You can do a, an algorithm that you are thinking about the challenge, something that you want to do. You have the skills, right? that's why you are here. You know how to do this kind of things. Now the idea is where, where to deploy that and how to use it, how to, how to reach the maximum amount of people by being able to deploy that into, for example, a phone. But there are other examples, and there is always a but. The edge has some problems. What about the latency? What about I need connection, at least, to connect once and deploy the system, and I need security? So the edge can be anything, but you need to be sure that you are using the right uh, edge and you are using the right technology to connect to that. And we are going to speak on some examples from Microsoft and some partners about this edge. Yeah. Indeed, you have seen many uh, devices that maybe are more in the home or home automation or, or in this case, for a consumer space. There are a catalog for, for, from Azure uh, focused on uh, edge for industrial scenarios. In this case, we wanted to, to leverage not just really edge from uh, just uh, devices uh, capable edge at the industrial, but focus on the AI-enabled edge devices that you can, you can start working. For example, one uh, that has uh, usually the deep learning is moving faster in the vision and speech uh, uh, use cases. This is um, a Qualcomm device that uh, Azure enable for uh, vision, so you, you can deploy remote uh, models inside that, that device and then be able to 
run whatever algorithm you want to, to be done at the, at the edge. This is more from a developer and even a test uh, a prototype, even uh, use cases. Of course, you can go deeper. In this case, and, uh, you know, uh, you may know the Kinet uh, uh, device. This is bringing the capabilities and moving a hundred times better from, from, from the Kinet in order to integrate in potential uh, industrial or other mm, manufacturing warehouses, uh, retail uh, scenarios, so that you are able to integrate that hardware into your own uh, products or, or services. Moving more into this uh, speech, this is another device a enabled in the sense of, of I can integrate from a smart home a scenario to um, uh, a car uh, um, on any other potential uh, edge device where I can integrate and, and deploy uh, models for speech device, uh, speech uh, scenario uh, recognition or language understanding or whatever uh, use case uh, I think it's valuable for our customers. And in this case, it's with Robo, everything is uh, it's, it's released, so you can just uh, bring it after that. And last but not least, uh, the drone uh, evolution here with DG, DJI. Uh, in this case, they release uh, an edge device, in this case, a drone, that's able to deploy inside that drone a model, a machine learning model, in, and through the camera, being able to uh, uh, make potential mm, routine or even detect some potential things, for example, to to, to review electrical uh, towers or, or whatever scenario you may be thinking about. And then, of course, enable your own edge device. This is not something about this is this device that you have built and you may use it or not. But at the end, as Pablo was saying, is this is a, a software open source a project that you can embed on your solutions uh, and, and use based on a specific use case. Something that you observe from manufacturing, retail, banking, health, or whatever scenario you may be thinking about. And because we predicted that you will be really sleeping by this time, we have another demo to wake you up. Right now. OK. And speaking about the drones, while he's preparing the demo, actually I want to tell you about the client in Belgium that they were spending a lot of money on putting a right 4G for controlling the harbor with a lot of drones. And we spoke to them and said, well, you don't need to have coverage in the whole harbor. Why don't you use the edge to process things in the drone? And whenever you have the connection, you get the data and you come back. And I said, well, I've just spent a lot of money putting the best connection in the harbor. I should have known this three months ago. So for you, maybe it's not that late to, uh, to find the scenarios where the edge can save a lot of money as well. In this case, we have used um, uh, a service in, in Azure, it's a custom vision that where you, you, you can just drag and drop images, uh, make a, a labeling for in, in those uh, images and uh, from an algorithm that's uh, already trained, uh, make some sort of uh, transfer learning to your own use case. So in this case, based on uh, initial training for custom vision, we have trained uh, two models. One is for uh, printed board boards, so that the the system can learn when a board is broken. In this case, the the lines uh, one are defective in the sense that maybe when we build those boards, uh, ones they were defective, and others are, are are right. So here, mm, the the good point of the acceleration of these services is that you can even train with uh, few data. Just in there, we are just have just trained with uh, 10 images. And based on that, you are just uh, simply add images uh, as I have done and click the, the train button to be able to, to, to have a, a model ready for you. This case is uh, pretty fast in the sense that uh, 15, what? 10 minutes. But what? the idea here is that uh, after that, you can export that model and run at the edge. 
At the end, this service can, can be queried and, and run from the, uh, from the cloud. Uh, but of course, as we are in the machine learning on the edge, the idea is that that model can be downloaded and can be, it can be run in a mobile. At the end, it's uh, an edge through some sort of uh, uh Have you been in, the, in, the, in also there was another talk today about machine learning from our colleagues from Google. Have you been there in that talk? OK, so more or less, this is the same. It's up to you or what to choose. But there was, we want to go one step further. It's when you have the model that is trained, OK, with this process that is easy, click, upload the images, transfer learning, what do I do with the model? A demo? <laughs> no. The idea is what we are going to do here is to deploy one of those models into a phone. And this is where I bring my phone up. People that know me try not to send any messages now because you're on a screen. OK. And we are I'm going to use an application and it's called Intelligent Kiosk. Okay? This application is available for laptops in a Windows Store. Okay? And here you have some demos that you can, by just getting your keys from Azure, put your keys here and use it to demo some of the functionalities. One really simple one is one that recognizes fruits. And there is a very basic model, uh, hopefully with this light. And this is not, nothing complicated, but you'll be able to recognize that this is an orange with 97% of accuracy, okay? Nothing impressive, but the impressive part here is, okay, now if I want to, I know where to put the orange. <laughs> Give it a If I want to download, well, I can also disconnect this. This is going to run also without connection. Actually, I'm going to do it, but I want to add a new, a new model. I just need to, okay, hello. Click on plus. And the models that Carlos has shown Basically, if you want to export the model, I come here. Now you cannot see the screen, but basically I scan that. And by scanning that, and this is complicated, what I'm doing is downloading that, mo that model into my phone. Okay? Hopefully now it's downloading the model and it's in my phone. It's important when you are creating the model to understand that the RAM and the, 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 the computer power that you're going to have is this. Okay? Now that I have the model here, I can do another image classification. Hopefully, it was not that difficult. That is recognize cats or dogs. That was the model that he was trained, that he trained in the, in the cloud. But I guess the connection is not working that well. This is really small, and it's basically downloading that. Okay? I think you need to trust me on this one. But we have a backup here. We always have a backup that we also have an application that has already the model. That is the big data application. We were not really, well, that was the name that we put. That basically is recognizing, and we can do that. The yeah, if this for is effective, for the effective or not defective. Hopefully the light is good enough. This is defective, so it's saying this is a defective one. And to show that this is real, what I'm going to do basically is put the airplane mode, and then it should also say that this is defective, OK? Basically, what we are showing here is that you have the knowledge already to create a model, train the model with one of the applications that you have already, the models there, just to tune the last part of the model, get that model, and install that model everywhere or anywhere. And we also have this application, Real-Time Crowd Insights, is the one that I wanted to show. And this is supposed to tell me my age. if I. Is the one that I love, and I can put that here to you. Also, Alberto, you can be a volunteer because I have a cable, and this should say that I'm 25, well, 30. I'm not that young anymore. I was 25 the last time I used this. Okay, but basically, what we wanted to show, hopefully, the demo was illustrative enough, and we come back to the presentation, is that you can today already start developing these algorithms and deploying those algorithms to a software or hardware that doesn't have, doesn't need all the compute power, okay? So just to quickly recap, why, why we are speaking here today, why are we are speaking about the IoT Edge today and what to you? Because we have these waves of innovation. We have the cloud, unlimited source of data and power. We had IoT getting all the data from everywhere and putting that into the cloud. Now suddenly the artificial intelligence was ready to process all that. But the important thing, among any others, is the last mile. Where are you going to deploy those algorithms? How are you going to use those algorithms? Are you going to put that in 1,000 devices all over the world? 
to really democratize the usage of that uh, algorithm, that model. That's what we want to do. We want to be able to give you the tools to be able to do that uh, deployment, that management of the models that you can already create these days. Of course, there are always barriers, but the good thing is that if you go together, the barriers of the cloud are the benefits or the edge. Because what is the problem with the cloud? High volume of data. Oh, that's, that's something that maybe you don't want to put all the data in the cloud. You can use the edge to filter what data you want to put up and what data should stay wherever it's generated. Also, privacy. If you cannot put your, all your data in the cloud, you can uh, um, train the, the model with all the data, and some of the data will stay on premises. You don't want to send all the video, what you were saying with the, with the guy in the, the trucks and also the guy at the hospital. You don't want to, to maybe send that. You want to send some screenshots whenever something has happened. So it's really important to work both of them together. So the question is, when should I use the cloud, and when should I use the edge? And the answers are pretty simple. If you are doing remote monitoring and management, if want to use, what you want to do is compare a huge amount of data, then the cloud is the perfect place to do that. If you are merging data from different sources, also you can do that in the cloud. And if you need infinite computer, the cloud is the best part to do that. But if you know low latency, then go and apply those algorithms to the edge. If you need protocols, uh, translation, or you need to Basically, you don't know about domotics and PLCs, OPCs, the protocols that are there. No, no, there are not many people that know how to program for those protocols. This is one of the good things about it, that we are putting a layer on top of that. So if you want to program something that works with a camera in your house, you don't need to know all the protocols. You can use Python, or you can use any of the tools that you already know. So this symmetry is really, really important, to be able to do something in the cloud or do something on the edge, and those things are synchronized to give you the capabilities to really deploy models anywhere. But when we speak about the edge, we need to think that the edge it has a spectrum as well. It can be something as small as a microcontroller, with we call it Azure Sphere, and it was the first Linux distribution uh, deployed by Microsoft. But you also have IoT devices, as I said. You have Windows IoT. You have Linux as a operative system, Raspberry Pi, the Azure stack, and then you have Azure as well. Then the intelligent goes up and you can use the features that are in the cloud to do this, these things that we are speaking about. So now that we explain more or less, and we have five minutes left, what is the edge? The next question is, why machine learning? Okay? And then I like this picture. You know what is this? This is the data set when you go to the client and they, they say, I have all the data. That's what they have. And many talks have been speaking about it is important to have meaningful data, because when you have meaningful data, you have something similar to this. And if the data that you really want to have what you're expecting, and the client first time they think that they have, but maybe they don't, this is what they have. So you need to be able also to take decisions to, 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 to fulfill your data set with the right data. So what kind of decisions? Do you need to think what data do you need in almost real time? We call that hot path. What data you need that can be processed in a batch mode? We call that cold path. And even more and more these days, what we have is a warm path. This is a lambda architecture explaining a very basic concept, whether so it's hot or, or cold. And today, the technology is most of the times allowing us the possibility to do it warm, at the speed that you want. And also, there's the other question. Do you need to cook a little bit the data, like the C survey, before you put it on the cloud? You need to, you need to do something like putting together few signals and create one signal? Do you need to look at the window to see the average temperature in that window? You don't need to do that on the cloud. Maybe you can do that on the edge. And you have the average temperature for the last five minutes. When you got that value, you put it on the cloud. Okay? So with all those decisions, you need to add this, this tool that is the IoT Edge to your machine learning pipeline. You are here is because probably you know this. You've seen very, a lot of similar slides during these two days about the pipeline. People are speaking about, and even more, data scientists, some of them, and this is arguable, they need to use the software engineering uh, practices. And one of the things that I want to add is in your data set and your data tools as a data scientist, you need to add where do you want to deploy that. Do you want to deploy that to the cloud, on premises, or to the edge? So once you, when you are taking a decision, you need to think that now you have the power to do a flexible deployment, and use all the algorithms that, as I said, we are putting there, 
and create something that is not as complicated as an autonomous car, but that you can use on the real day. Okay? Once you have done that decision, the next decision is what cloud to use. Okay. Of course, our recommendation is to, to use Azure. Why? Because basically you have all the sophisticated port, uh, models already that you can use, you have frameworks, and you, you can use any framework that you are comfortable with, then you can use tools like Machine Learning Studio, you can use Databricks, or you can use a virtual machine. When you, want the, when you need the, the power, when you need the process power, you can choose between using CPUs, GPUs, FFGA, and at the end, as I said, where do you want to deploy that? You need to choose where to deploy, and these are all the options. This is happening today, and as the last slide, as I said, we want to finish with a video. So one of our clients is speaking about this. This is using the internet connection. So yeah, this is uh, an edge scenario where a manufacturing customer is leveraging uh, vision, machine learning at the vision to be able to, hopefully it's running, to detect defects uh, at the in, uh, electrical boards. We should have used the edge. You will have a uh, no, the case connection. study. But here the idea is that they, they run a just-in-time uh, production, and they want to reduce uh, scrap material and inventory. At the end, they, they don't want to have the stock. So as soon as they find out that there is a, a problem in the production line, they are able to, to, to fix it and, and, and work for better uh, delivery with the, to the customer. So at the end, this would be uh, running Vision uh, with a, a project that's called Project Brainwave that's running uh, FPGAs that are a programmable uh, control, uh, controllers. It's hardware that it's running at the edge and that has a, a, a performance from one to a, a thousand times the, the normal GPUs or CPUs. So you need to believe that that's true because the video is not loading. So we we're going to but keep that part. You will have that that in the yeah. in the presentation afterwards. And basically, that's it. We are going to show just the last slide with the takeaways. It's done and some references if you want to read more about this. Uh, we invite you to go to Azure IoT Edge website where you have a lot of information. Okay, this is what happens when you don't have everything on premise. Okay, it's downloading. Well, the others is that references are material, so we'll hopefully. put it online. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, say no carga. Well, any questions? Now we have. 20 seconds. Thank you very much. And so thank you for being here. Thank you. Hopefully we will manage to explain what we are trying to say here. It was a pleasure. And if you want to ask something, we are going to be here and also ask the experts ask the, expert the, last, the next 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you very there's much. A, there's a question. And there's a question here. Microphone. Uh, hi. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, just uh, a set of questions. Uh, all the examples you've mentioned are projects that has been run by you, by Microsoft. But I assume that Microsoft is not needed as partner for the integration. I mean, just Azure components and whatever the cost is. And OK, it's not actually needed the, the involvement of Microsoft. Yeah, no, it's not uh, okay. needed. We can, we can help and we can sure. engage with, with you. But it's, you can run through our uh, partners, our uh, partner channel. From us directly, or just for well, and from the, the information that we have uh, online, and okay. And the second question is: I assume that the only uh, additional products from Azure that we need, besides the one for machine learning, for ingestion, and the like, are the IoT Hub and the IoT SDK for the actual devices. Do we yeah. need anything else? Uh, you need to think about the the reading from the sensors. Sometimes, uh, usually, you need some sort of implementation of the sensors and protocols. Yeah. And uh, it is right, the, the, the endpoint that we were mentioning is the IT hub in this case. Okay. So it's at that point, that would be fine for start running. OK, thanks. And one more thing, the IoT uh, Edge has an SDK that is open. So the code is available on GitHub, and you can download it and start coding from, from there. So it's, it's open, OK?